God chose me has always been a mystery. All my life, I've been told. Good morning, folks. Good morning. It is a Friday here in the heart of the Arkansas Delta. Good morning. Get on in here this morning and say howdy at me. Come on in, grab that cup of coffee, grab your Bibles, grab your journals, and settle in for a good morning as we dive into the chat this morning. We're going to be wrapping up chapter 18 in the book of 1 Samuel this morning. I hope that you guys are ready for that. I hope that you have enjoyed our journey in. We are now looking at the ascension of David and the descension of King Saul. So man, go ahead. Come on in here and say howdy at me. Let me know that you are here and go ahead and hit that share button. Folks, you know what to do. You know the share button is where we go. It's where we're able to take it out to your friends, to your family. Out is like I like to say, out into your neck of the woods, out in your neck of the woods. Guys, come on in. Good to see you. We got a cloudy day going on out here. Uh, it looks like we got scattered showers throughout the, the state, but uh, guys, there's a pretty good line of rain uh, that's uh, that's going to hit the, the uh, western border here not uh, too far from now. We'll probably see it later on this evening. So if you guys got to get out, mm -mm, y'all got to get in, get out, and get, get back home. Before you get 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 yourself soaking wet, because I got a feeling that it is going to come in. I'm in the process of getting on in, getting her shared. I want you to do the same thing, man. Oh man, oh man. This is those days. You know when you just kind of look out, you know, and it's cloudy. It, it, it's kind of um, it's almost dreary, isn't it? Uh, but we do not have to be dreary. We do not have to allow it to make us dreary. And so uh, I want you to have a great, great day. I want you to enjoy your Friday. Uh, whatever you are doing, I want you to be safe. I want you to have fun. And if you see anybody, then please, please, please do the right thing and tell them about Jesus. It might be the thing that changes their life this day. Man, oh man, come on in here, say howdy to me. I'm trying to get uh, a few things rocking and rolling here, and then I'm going to be back to do some chit-chatting with you, and I will be good to go. Man, I had a good day yesterday. Got out and about, got to go down and see my friends uh, with the drive through prayer yesterday, and that was always fun. Got to see Gary and Kim. And Mr. Merle and all of the crew that was down there, man, that's a good, super good ministry that's uh, going on. And if you have not taken the chance to go through, uh, they can pray for you. You can pray for them. Uh, man, it's just, a, it's just a good day, and I love it. I love to go down and see those uh, sweet folks every chance I get. So come on in, say hello, everybody, and then uh, please, 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 you know what to do. Hit that share button. Hit that sure button. I am almost there. Let me click about that button right there. And I'm going to hit a couple more switches, and then I am good to go. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. Miss Danny, I see you. Ten minutes for subbing. Hey, take care of them cheering. Take care of them cheering right there. Let's see who I got. Hey, hey, Gary, you are here this morning. Good morning, Gary. I'm glad to see you and Kim this morning. Pray for safe travels as we're going to Georgia to see Kirk Cameron's Campfire Revival. I, I want you guys to have a ton of fun, but by far, be safe, okay? Be safe. Safe. We want you guys to be safe. Have tons of fun. Good morning, Miss Judy. Uh, my bride is on. Let's see. Mary Weddington is on. Who all is up and up and out of here? Uh, who all is up and out of here? Come on in and say hello. Hey, Gary, since you're on, let me go ahead and tell you. I talked to uh, uh, I talked to Brother Rondell yesterday about uh, coming together and kind of kind of partnering with you guys with that drive through prayer with some ideas. And so you might want to talk to him. Okay, about uh, what all he and I he and I talked about. Uh, I, I do think it's a, a fabulous ministry. I think what you guys are doing is is just killer, and and it's not a church thing. It's an associational thing, is what it's turned into, because there's some different churches, you're different locations. I think it's amazing, and so uh, I kind of gave him some ideas as to what we as an association can do to come in and can help you. And so uh, uh, just get with him and, and see what all you guys can uh, conspire and uh, how to make that thing even bigger than it already is. Good morning, Margie Jordan. I see you sneaking in. Good morning, good morning. All right, like I said, we got uh, got a little bit of overcast going on in the state today. We got water uh, going to be popping through today. We'll have, we'll have uh, you know, just showers occasionally throughout the day, it looks like, which that's fine. But the hard rain is going to be coming later on this afternoon. So uh, 
Uh, you guys want to be careful if you do get out today. Probably going to need a jacket. The wind's kind of blowing a little bit. Uh, make sure you got your umbrellas just in case. And uh, man, oh man, oh man, just uh, just be careful, okay? Get all your running around done, get in, get home. Uh, this weekend, hey, we want to encourage you to uh, be with us on campus if you possibly can, 9.30 Sunday School. And then at 10.15, we'll turn the digital lobby on, give you a chance to get in, get on, say hello, and to engage with each other. And then our morning worship will start at 10.30. I'm looking forward to being with you. Uh, i got a great lineup of worship songs that we are prepared uh, just man, it's going to be tons of fun, and then I'm going to be continuing in First Peter as we are journeying through that uh, that sojourner's guide, looking at hope in a hostile world. So that's all what's going on this week. Um, we we did have some folks that were. Uh, let me go ahead and just tell you now that uh, we had some some incredible folks from the sprinkler company that were in yesterday. Did a lot of work. They were there all day. Uh, and doing some work on the repairs that was needed. Uh, I don't think that it is totally done, uh, but I do think that uh, uh, they got a long, long, long way down the road. I want to thank Brother Larry, and I want to thank Brother Norville. They gave their entire day yesterday to stay at the uh, the church campus while those men were taking care of our sprinkler system. And so uh, if, if you see them on Sunday, just, just simply say thank you for taking the time and taking care of that because both of those men were there literally all day. They got there at 8.30 yesterday morning and it looks like they did not leave till after five last night. So just thank uh, Larry and, and uh, Norville. That would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Looking so forward to... Uh, uh, really getting getting our, our, our complex back uh, in uh, shape uh, because right now we are just using it for Sunday morning services only due to the uh, to the damage and I'll be so glad to get everything rocking and rolling so that we can move forward. Uh, Brian, we do thank you for your mugs. I appreciate your support there. And if you've not been mugged, hey, mm, if you do not have an RBC mug, you need to let me know. And we will get you mugged. It has our name on it, our website on it. Got a great cool graphic of the uh, the three crosses that are on there. It's in cobalt blue. It's an 11 ounce mug. Um, here's the thing. There's $5 a piece, $5 each plus any amount over that that you would be willing to donate. And all donations are going to take care of our software upgrade that we've had to do. It's a, it's a licensing fee that uh, we have to have every year, and this is uh, going to be going to take care of it. I'm going to tell you now, you you guys have just literally knocked it out of the park, and I'm just I'm so thankful for that. I'm just blessed to be able to see it. We've still got a few mugs left, so if you want some, you need to let us know so we can get them to you. We will have uh, a few of the remaining mugs left on Sunday morning, and you can pick them up there if you are on campus. So all of that is going on. If you have not shared to your news feed, I want to encourage you to do that. So right now, share our broadcast to your news feed. Let's get it out into your neck of the woods, your neck of the woods. All right, folks, our daily Bible verse as we are discussing overcoming anxiety. Today comes out of 2 Timothy 1.7. This is one of those you want to highlight in your Bible, okay? You want to uh, uh, just make sure that you memorize, that you, you commit this you know, deep, deep, deep into, into memory. One of those that you want to write down in two or three places so that you can, you know, get it down and you can see it a lot. And it's just a, a constant reminder because there's so much encouragement. There's so much strength here that we get. Second Timothy 1 7 says this. For God, and let's understand this is Paul writing to Timothy. Okay. This is that second letter that Paul writes to his preacher boy, his, what he calls his son in the ministry to Timothy. And he says this, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. Oh, amen. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So in other words, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. That is such a great, great passage of scripture as we roll into the weekend. You guys got weekend plans? Got anything going on? I know Gary and Kim are going to be headed south and uh, going to go down to uh, that campfire revival that's going on. Uh, who else is doing what around here? I'm going to be spending the bulk of the day in today in study, and I'll wrap everything up tomorrow. 
Um, uh, just kind of glanced out at my yard. Doesn't even look like I'm going to need to be in my yard this coming uh, this coming weekend, which is a blessing. Now I might have to, uh, you know, get out there and manhandle those dandelions. How, you know why is it that when you mow your yard, that within hours, hundreds of dandelions are right back up? Okay, just waving at you. Why? Why is that? I just, I just don't know. Boy, if we could ever get the dandelions out, right? I mean, just get the darn dandelions out. My yard would look amazing if, if it wasn't for the dandelions. And I'm sure most of yours does too. It's just, it's stupid. I just, I just don't get it. All right, folks, here we go. First Samuel chapter 18. We're going to wrap it up today. I hope that you have enjoyed, enjoyed diving into this. We have looked at the, the, the rise of David, the fall of Saul. Uh, and it's just going to continue. I mean, I mean, it's just going to get greater to both aspects. You're going to see David rise farther, faster, and you're going to see Saul fall even farther, faster. It's just an amazing contradiction that's going on here. Okay, we're picking up at verse 22. Verse 22, do you remember yesterday? We talked about he, uh, David, he declined. He declined the first daughter in marriage. He wasn't worthy. He didn't want to do it. So in an attempt to make him mad, Saul gives her to another guy. Didn't work. Then Saul finds out that another one of his daughters, Michael, is totally in love with David. I mean, she's got the giddies for him. And so he, Saul thinks it's going to work to his advantage. Oh, but it backfires. So let's keep reading. We're in verse 22. So he's about to give David Michael in marriage. Remember, this is part of the bounty, remember? The bounty was all kinds of money to the guy who killed Goliath, a daughter in marriage, and you know, tax freedom for, her, for his dad. Okay. So technically, these were gifts. Okay, y'all with me on that? Technically, they were gifts. But we're going to find a catch here just a little bit. Verse 22, and Saul commanded his servants, communicate with David secretly and say, look, the king has delight in you and all his servants love you. Now, therefore, become the king's son-in-law. Saul right now is playing politics. He's trying to secretly go to David through his servants and trying to butter him up getting him to come around to the idea to go ahead and marry this second daughter. It's like, look, we love you. The people love you. You know, you're going to get to be the king's son-in-law. You just, you just need to do this, okay? So Saul's servant spoke in those words in the hearing of David. Here's David's response. David said, does it seem to you a light thing to be a king's son-in-law, seeing that I am poor and, and lightly esteemed man? In other words, this is not a, a, a little thing. This is huge. To be the king's son-in-law is, is a monumental you know, position. It's a monumental task to uphold. And I am nothing but a poor and lowly esteemed guy. I'm a shepherd. Who am I to do that? Verse 24, and the servants of Saul told him, Say it in this manner, David spoke. So, so in other words, the servants go and they do their dirty deed and they, they do all the gossiping behind, behind everybody's back and they're talking to David. David responds and they go back and they're now telling the king. Then Saul said, thus you shall say to David. In other words, I need you to go back to him a second time. Okay, this is you talking. Okay, this is not me directly. This is you. Thus you shall say to David, the king does not desire any dowry. Here we go. Okay. It was traditional that when even a, a, a daughter was given in marriage, that the future son-in-law had to pay a financial sum to the father for the daughter. And it was called a dowry. And the richer the, the boy that was going to marry the, the daughter, the greater the dowry. It could be money. It could have been livestock. It could have been gold. It could, it could have been anything. But there was always a payment of something for a daughter's hand in marriage. And so 
Saul knew this, even though it was part of the bounty, right? Okay. So in other words, yeah, I'm going to give you my daughter, but you're going to have to pay me this bounty or this dowry. So he says, tell David this, that the king does not desire any dowry. Well, if there was a period at the end of that statement, it would have been amazing. However, it wasn't. The next word is the word, but in other words, However, in other words, you do not owe me any dowry. However, there's that catch. There's that clause, if you will. The king does not desire any dowry, but. So here is now what he's going to let David know is going to be the payment to have Michael's hand in marriage. The king does not desire any dowry, but 100 foreskins of the Philistines to take vengeance on the king's enemy. Now, folks, let's just be real here, okay? This is exactly what it says. It is the foreskins of a hundred male warriors. We're talking about not only death, but literally mutilation of the bodies in order to get the foreskins to take back to the king. Now, let's just be real here, okay? Saul is thinking that David cannot accomplish this. He's thinking that he will go out and in the midst of war, he will get killed. And surely, after killing and mutilating the bodies for the foreskins of a hundred men, that somebody surely is going to get a lucky shot in, maybe fire an arrow or throw a spear or can sneak up on him with a sword and can kill him. And that will save him all of the time of him himself trying to kill him. It will also protect his daughter from being in marriage to him. Again, the jealousy, the envy, the bitterness of Saul toward the soon-to-be king. 104 skins of the Philistines to make vengeance on the king's enemies. In other words, I want to go, I want to get after all those Philistines. You remember, those are the ones that you've already made mad because you killed their champion. You already have a target on your back, dude. Yeah, that's going to be what you need to pay me as the dowry to marry my daughter, Michael. Okay, so when the servants told David these words, it pleased David's well. It pleased David well to become the king's son-in-law. So in other words, I know now that I don't have to come up with any money. So this is doable. This is doable. Even the gathering of a hundred foreskins of Philistine warriors is doable. And then scripture says, now the days had not expired. In other words, that it was still within the time frame of the giving of the daughter in marriage. So David had a window of time that needed to be done. And David's thinking, okay, no problem. This is a man that has no fear. Okay. This is a man that not only has no fear, it really radiates this verse that we've read out of 2 Timothy this morning when Paul told Timothy, and I'm going to read this verse again, which is our daily verse. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And David is just radiating that verse. Oh, man, 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 man. Therefore, verse 27, Therefore, David arose and went, he and his men. Now, you remember, he is in charge of a thousand men. Saul's already taken care of that. And he killed 200 men of the Philistines. Saul only asked for 100. David and his men killed twice as many. And David brought their foreskins. He he killed and he mutilated the bodies 
of 200 men just to please the king. He was obedient. No fear. And he gave them in full count. In other words, he went back to the king's court. One, two, three, four. All the way past 100, all the way up to 200. Y'all, that's just, that, that's incredible. That, it is just, it's absolutely incredible. He gave them in full count to the king so that he might become the king's son-in-law. In other words, I'm doing this in order to pay for the hand of Michael in marriage. I have fulfilled the requirement. I have paid the dowry. And now there's no money needs to exchange hands. I don't have to go back to my dad. I don't have to take anything from my father. I have done as you have asked. In fact, I have doubled it. Then Saul gave him Michael, his daughter, as a wife. The exchange was done. Verse 28, Thus Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David. In other words, there was no doubt that God's hand was all over David. Only God could protect David and his men to do such a deed. It, it was unheard of. Only God could have done that. No man could have done that on his own. No man could have done that under the supposed protection of false gods, false idols. He knew that it was God. And not only did he know that the Lord was with David, he knew that Michael, his daughter, loved him. He knew. He knew that his daughter was madly in love with him. He couldn't deny it. He couldn't get it out of her. It was reality. I'm going to reread verse 28. The Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David and that Michael, Saul's daughter, loved him. And Saul was still more afraid of David. In other words, the more David does, the more it's evident that the hand of God is on him, the greater the fear that he has. Because he knows his time is coming. He just doesn't know when and he doesn't know how. But he knows that the hand of God is on David and it is not on him. You remember what Samuel told him back several chapters before? That God was no longer with him. And now... It's evident to see what happens when the hand of God is indeed on someone. So Saul became David's enemy continually. Now, if you remember back in verse 9 of the same chapter as we read this past week, it says, so Saul eyed David from that day forward. In other words, at that moment, he was always keeping an eye on David. Okay, he was going to keep an eye. He, he had a, an eye on him. He, he wanted to hear everything that he, he said, to see everything that he'd done, always in suspicion. Now, now, all of that comes to fruition and that David only sees, or Saul only sees David as an enemy. Notice, this is Saul's viewpoint. David does not reciprocate that. Okay, you understand that? Saul became David's enemy continually. In other words, he only saw his new son-in-law as, en as an enemy. Then the princes of the Philistines went out to war. In other words, this is the hierarchy of the Philistine you know, government. The princes, the sons of the king. Then the princes of the Philistines went out to war. And so it was that whenever they went out, that David behaved more wisely. There's that phrase again. Behaved more wisely. He never let any of this go to his head. So now then, not only does he know that the hand of God is on him, not only does he know that he is an iconic hero in all of Israel and all of Judah, now not only is he the son-in-law to the king, not only is the, the, the king's son, the crown prince, has given David his robe and his armor, David 
behaves wisely. He walks and he talks with his Lord. That is his focus. David behaved more wisely than all the servants of Saul so that his name became highly esteemed. The growth of David continues. The popularity of David continues. The success of David will continue. As we continue this book, the thing I want us to understand is that the popularity of David will continue to grow. The strength of David will continue to grow. The anger toward David from Saul will continue to grow. And he will consistently be looking for ways to have David killed. All for naught. Every plan will fail. Why? Because he was God's man. He was God's chosen. He was a man after God's own heart. Folks, that's all I've got for this Friday. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you get out today, please be careful, be safe, wear a light jacket here in the Delta. Uh, you might want to have your umbrellas. Uh, please make plans to be on campus with us on Sunday. If you physically can, we would love to have you. We would love to see you. Uh, and uh, I just want to uh, just encourage you to start making phone calls. Start sending texts. Start even sending Facebook messages. Let's be inviting folks to come back to the campus, okay? We're still cleaning on a regular basis. As a matter of fact, we've got uh, got a team of ladies in the church complex right now that are cleaning and uh, sanitizing, getting ready for us on Sunday. So all of that is still being done. We still have room to social distance if that's what you do. You can still wear a mask if that is what you are comfortable wearing. Come, be with us as we gather together and we worship our risen Lord. Folks, I am going to get out of here. I love you guys so much. If you need anything, you know how to reach out to me. If you see somebody, tell them about it.